Hello, everyone. Uh, today I'll talk about um, the question of searching and uh, discovering software in general um, in the world of computing, and more specifically when it comes to the Geeks Package Manager. So, um, actually, a couple of years ago, uh, so there was this guy, he invented the World Wide Web in uh, 1989, and uh, tw uh, 20 years later, he gave this TED talk, which I think is quite amazing. I really recommend it. Uh, the next web, and um, asking about um, the linking of data. So it's a good thing to put data there on the internet, but how do we find it, and how do we correlate data which, with with each other? Uh, that's a very good question. I mean, it's a very general question, and I think it really applies to um, software as well. Um, how we find packages and how packages relate to each other, um, and not just packages. I talked about this just now. Um, so, um, so I think what it implies here, yeah, is that today we have those uh, package repositories, those uh, app stores, and if you already know what you're looking for, uh, you know this amazing software called VLC. So you look it up, you install it, and it works. But what if you're looking for a concept? Um, so how to back up my data? If you don't have the name, I mean, uh, this is very tribal knowledge. We, like, a lot of uh, those programs are very basically uh, 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 based on uh, the popularity. Um, but what about the rest? I mean, what about those more exotic features, uh, new fields, or things we simply don't know? So we'd like to, to be able to discover more efficiently. Um, there's something else as well. Um, so I like. Uh, uh, so do you know, uh, have you ever heard of dot files? So those little configuration files that you put in your home folder to configure your text editor, your uh, web browser, or anything. So it's all a program. And typically those file configuration files are stored in what we call this dot files repository. Uh, 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 quick show of hands, uh, how many people here have uh, ever written some configuration file on a computer? Okay, it works. Uh, I was a bit stressed about this because if they want to raise their hand, it would have been a big file. So, um, the, um, I actually did uh, try this query on GitHub and it returns some 130k, 130,000 dot file repository on GitHub. Uh, I think it's insane. I don't know what you think about it, but if, I don't know if we say there's an average of a, a thousand lines per repository, that's some millions of lines of code that are, um, well, used by. Uh, individual people, but not really put to the common good out there to be to be reused and to be shared. So essentially, don't find something personal. They they are not really um, those uh, general. Uh, they don't take this very general approach to these programs. So, um, I had this intuition that maybe we can um, start uh, put an end to this craziness and start being a bit more general. And by this, I mean that essentially what a dot file is, is that it implements a, a particular workflow that you have. For instance, if you think of a backup, you maybe write this backup script that will call some SSH, VPN connection, whatever, and use all things to transfer the data. And really, uh, I think we can be more general than that. So if you have this framework for services, uh, so just like system services, but maybe also user services, so the Essentially, those little declarative uh, snippets that tell you what you want to do, and once you've gotten that set up, uh, you can really, really share it with everyone else. I mean, this, it becomes very trivial and much less personal. Uh, I'll give you an example. So, in using some X expressions, uh, we could de uh, declare uh, at the global level. So, for everyone, we could declare this a uh, backup service type, and then. Um, Program it so it takes different fields, host a port for the server, and what's uh, what would be very interesting here is that you get those two fields. Uh, Austin plus VPN could be the way you want to do it, and this is where you can specialize, and this is where very obviously your own folders. So that's also where you specialize. But what's really cool about this is that the specialized part is only three lines, so you don't need a huge script or multiple scripts actually to bundle together to get your, your features running. You can do, we can be more generally distributed so that we save everyone uh, work and time. 
Um, so how do we do, how do we do this? Um, I think there's another talk happening later about system D and home D. Uh, it's very similar. Uh, so we already have this um, this thing that's, that's working. Or um, why not? Well, since we're in this room, why not GNU gigs and GNU Shepherd? And what I find great about this is that you can install GNU gigs with Shepherd on any system, or a GNU Linux distribution. And um, well, it just works. Uh, so it's quite universal. Everyone can use it. So it's very easy to share. And uh, what's also particularly interesting about Shepherd and Geeks is that they can be tied together in a way that when you declare a service in Shepherd, it will automatically drag the required dependencies. So with my previous, um, no, a previous example here uh, from my user uh, dot files, I can just put this service there. I don't have to install uh, a VPN program or, or, or sync. It will do it for me automatically. So I don't have to care anymore about the implementation, implementation details, which are the underlying programs. I don't care about this. I want to get the job done. I want to, I want to do the backup. That's really what I, I care. The rest is just details. Um, so back to, uh, let's leave the services aside for a moment and back to the packages. Um, next, next to us, um, it's a growing distribution these days, has some 40,000 plus packages. Um, it's pretty huge, right? Uh, Gix is getting there um, very slowly. So with some 12,000 packages. So imagine, I mean, um, do you really know uh, those packages? I mean, have you ever browsed through the list? Uh, it, it's really hard to find your way around. I mean, you probably, you can probably browse the list by the programs that you already know, like VLC and so on. But what if you have to discover something new? I mean, it, we need a good search system. We need, we need to link the data so that we can um, explore more humanly, more efficiently. So it speaks to us. We're not machines, right? We cannot browse uh, 40,000 packages. So, uh, got some problems here. <clears throat> um, uh, if, if you've, um, so a lot of package managers have support for searching files uh, within packages. For instance, um, if you know the um, Mercurial uh, VCS, a version control system, uh, the executable is actually called HG. So if you're looking for HG, you might not find Mercurial or vice versa. So you need a system that supports both. Uh, a lot of package managers actually support it. Geeks doesn't. And, but not all of them are smart enough to have this uh, search system that will, uh, that will actually look it up both in files and in the description or the package name and all those things. Uh, in general, um, you, you do the file search separately from the package search. I think we could blend those two. Uh, so I think, and since this is um, missing from gigs, I think we can implement this this way. That would be pretty cool. Uh, another problem is that of, um, well, the uh, so-called Gen2 use flags, if you use Gen2, or on Nix, um, things called the, the package overrides. So we may have different features within a package itself. So for instance, you may build uh, a browser with different types of backends, or maybe GTK or Qt, and then you don't really get the same package in the end. I mean, if you have one build with some features, another one, I mean, the same package build with other features, uh, then we have a different type of granularity. We want to uh, also know about the features that are like, at this level, at this granular level. Then, um, and uh, one that's um, a complex topic, actually, but it would be nice to be able to, just like for files, to be able to search for features within programs as well. Um, so I, I was talking about search before, and that means that um, we, we need good search. Um, I think a, a lot of package managers don't have good search. Um, maybe it's easier to just find, uh, to just do uh, an internet query to actually find what you're looking for. And that's a problem. We should be able to do it from the distribution itself. So I think we need uh, uh, good tooling, uh, good user interface, and in particular, good GUI. Um, I mean, we want to, to make this very accessible to all of us, not just command line gurus. Um, then, um, so go going back to linked data, uh, how does it work? Uh, what is linked data uh, when it comes to packages? Because they don't necessarily have 
they don't, the package itself doesn't know about the relation with another except for the dependencies. But what if uh, the two video players, uh, MPV and VOC, well, maybe they're not related well, uh, on the software level, but they're related in the meaning, uh, in their purpose, right? They're both video players. So here we, we need a system to have some human input that says, um, okay, this is how we categorize things and they belong to the same category. So you can start um, adding this um, humanization of the search domain among packages. Then, well, of, then those are very typical features that you get from um, app stores, etc. You get the number of downloads, the ratings, all those things. Uh, why does it matter? Uh, I think it, it actually matters because it, it gives us additional data about how much a program is used. So, for instance, the number of downloads or ratings, um, maybe we should focus a little bit on the most popular package because we want to make sure that they work. But actually, more interestingly, we want to focus on the least popular package because if we have it and only a few people care about it and it breaks, well, chances are that no one is going to fix it. So with that kind of data, we have uh, a better perspective on what should be, uh, what should get special attention. Um, the last, uh, the last entry here, tags, uh, put with a question mark because uh, uh, we, we would tend to think that maybe tags should belong to the package metadata. They are not human input. You would say like um, VSC should have the hashtag video tag, um, but maybe not. Actually, uh, the problem with tags is that they're essentially very subjective. They, um, they, they, go over, uh, they go with time with, with uh, different uh, fashions. So maybe today we'll talk about cloud. Uh, maybe this term will go out of fashion in, uh, in five years. We talk about something else. So the word cloud will not be meaningful anymore. So in that sense, I think tags uh, should be very dynamic, um, very volatile. Mm, so, um, so what does it mean to be searching? Um, um, I think so. This is basically um, combining everything I said so far into one single interface. So don't have, don't separate the search for different components. We don't want to have a separate search for files, for features, uh, for the community data. We want to just write my package manager search, or even from a nice GUI, um, and write uh, well your query. I mean. Uh, I want to back up my data, and it should return the relevant stuff. And that's, that would be really amazing, right? You don't have to care much more about it. So, um, for um, so for the for with regard to the detail implementation details. Um, so, Wikidata. Do you know Wikidata? Show hands. Mm, okay. So, it's surprisingly not so popular, but well. Well, here I guess we have a select audience. Um, Wikidata has this amazing project where it's a wiki by the you know, Wikimedia Foundation, where everything, every object, every entity, every concept on the planet is indexed and has those properties. So typically, um, do I have a web here? Um, yeah, if I do this, you see me up here. So this is a Wikidata entry. And, um, so it shows, um, it shows the languages, the, um, different terms, the kind of uh, instance it is, if it's a software library, video player, you get the logo, you get all those different things, the um, inception date. So um, well, what's really cool with uh, Wikidata is that, well, it's a wiki, so it's really free to, free to edit it, and you can put all of those um, human uh, inputs in there. So that could be a very nice interface that we could um, um, exploit to actually uh, make use of this uh, community-driven data. Um, sorry. Uh, uh, next, um, well, that's a uh, note to myself, so, uh, sort of. Um, so how do, you, how do you make this search engine uh, practically? Like package manager search anything and it finds what you want? I think it's something really smart here. Zapkin is um, a nice implementation of that. It uses uh, a lot of those um, 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 it links between the stem words and so on. So it allows you to actually uh, support just the meaning of what you're trying to, to search and, and return the most relevant result. It's pretty amazing. Uh, if you don't know Zapian, check it out. And if you know something better, uh, please reach out to me. Mm. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, on, uh, the good news is that I'm actually working on it. Uh, I've received a grant from the Internet Foundation, and I would like to address more or less all the points I've mentioned today. And I would like to do it on Geeks because I believe that uh, it's a very good package manager. And, well, as I mentioned before, it's universal. Anyone can use it. So I'm not doing the work for uh, just a subset of the distributions. I could actually apply to everyone. Mm. Yeah, sorry. Mm. So uh, that would be, this is basically to sum up um, the five different steps that would be to, to implement all this. And um, here, if you're interested, it's a little bit of a side comment, but if you're interested by the Internet Foundation, the, if you're working on a free software project, check them out. They, they have quite a lot of money, so they would be, you would be more than welcome to, to contact them. Uh, and last but not least, if you want to follow up on the Geeks development, I will be there, and this is my personal website, my blog. I will be posting there my progress. And I hope that we be successful. Thank you very much. Questions, and please repeat the questions from Campo Tibia. Yes. Uh, how do you think uh, how you, you prefer to, to do the, the, the publishing of this? How, for example, I, I develop a tool for doing a special task, and I say to, OK, I want to, to publish it. How you, you, you are thinking about it? Having a central repository, I have to submit the request, or just put it somewhere? That's a very good question. Um, I don't know. And uh, I think that, OK, this is not part of my work, uh, my work project. Uh, I think this is a yeah, uh, central question. How do we uh, publish programs on the internet? Because, yeah, we can set up a repository, but well, in the end, uh, if no one knows about it, how do we find it? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have a good, good answer to this. So, yeah, would it be an idea you know, to, to, to take the results of the... Oh, sorry. My pocket goes off. Um, to actually feed the results into Wikidata rather than just use Wikidata. Yeah, that would be really good as well, yeah. yeah. So, maybe have some uh, uh, bi-directional yeah, for you, definitely. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> um.